How's it going guys? If you guys are catching up, just tuning in and haven't seen any of the videos I've uploaded in the last few days, there is an explanation as to why I do not have my beard anymore. Moving on, we will not address how I look a little bit like a creeper right now. We will instead focus on the review that we are here to talk about, which is the Evil Dead series and franchise. <laughs> So the Evil Dead, fantastic franchise for its practical effects and it's probably one of the most memorable films for that specifically alone. This was a group of kind of indie film developers that wanted to make this movie and it shows there's a lot of things about the film that are very like handmade, you know? Uh, the creatures, the different kind of angles they use with the camera to kind of give off these weird effects. And it's just like kind of a marvel of practical effects and filmmaking. Something that is kind of obviously a dying art right now. We're not getting a lot of that because of the heavy reliance on CGI. Alright, so let's start with the first film in the franchise, Evil Dead, the first one. It's pretty much a star as a group of teenagers who are on some sort of like summertime retreat and go to spend that time in a cabin in the woods. And they stumble upon this book that's made out of human flesh and written in human blood, all right? Inscribed in human blood. This is what I believe is maybe like the Necronomicon, which is kind of the focal point of this series. This book is what summons the dead, right? And the things in this series aren't exactly ghouls or goblins or zombies. There's some sort of hybrid, all right? They're a little different from most spirits that you get. I will say that the rules are set up here, but there's a lot of potential as far as what these spirits or demons or I believe they're called deadites can accomplish. They're kind of like zombies, but their limbs can work independently of one another and they can even possess the limbs of others, the living. And sometimes that person's limb might be possessed, even though their body and their mind might be in the right headspace. So they're almost like spirits, but they're also like zombies. And you can't just easily just decapitate them and expect them to be dead because their limbs can just kind of work independently. So there's a lot that goes into trying to kill one of something once it comes back. The sequel, Ash ends up back in this cabin again. I don't, maybe he was never able to leave. I can't really remember. My memory's a little foggy on that. For whatever reason, he ends up back in this cabin and there are other people who have come to visit. And he is trying to inform them that, you know, there's some crazy stuff going on here and they have to be careful and blah, blah, blah. Of course, they just kind of write him off as some sort of madman and they tie him up. And these people are actually researchers. They're actually here to research the book and some of the events that have happened here. So they're actually intrigued by this information, whereas for Ash is trying to warn them away from you know, messing with the occult or the spirits. And ultimately this film ends once again with Ash being the lone survivor. Uh, I think with these films you kind of expect other people to make it, but it, it almost never is the case. And the next film wouldn't come until about like 20 years later, 15, 20 years later, in like 1999, where Ash got teleported from a portal into like a medieval time frame. And he has to encounter these spirits again, these deadites, once again just in a prehistoric era. I, I personally didn't like a lot about this film in comparison to the other two. And I just seen this one fairly recently. I watched it this week to be prepared for this review. So it didn't leave that much of an impression on me personally. Ash Williams. This says actually from the evil dead to the dead by Don. Hmm, that's a weird title. I wanted to say Don of the Dead because of the way that it's listed on there, but it's dead by Don. Uh... <laughs> And uh, this is actually based off of the second one. You'll, we'll, we'll, I will show you kind of something that's more apparent because one of the more memorable scenes from that is really implemented in the figure and in the base. And uh, that is beautifully create, recreated. This, however, is just kind of showing you the face that I think is kind of molded into the Book of the Dead uh, that they have in these movies, the Necronomicon or whatever have you. And there's like all kinds of stuff here kind of showing you more details of the figure, a little bit of glimpse of the base there. And obviously, we also have a beautiful illustration 
of the character before she was turned into the figure, the hand-drawn version. So this is something I always like about these boxes. The top of the box is disappointing. They usually put something interesting up here, but not this time. So, yeah. All in all, the box is decent. Now the figure. I'm excited to review this figure, right? This is the first time I'm reviewing this figure. There are some figures I reviewed this year for the, for the second or third time. But it's been nice to review a figure that I haven't had a chance to talk about. And this one is a beauty. It's actually the first one they're reviewing this year that's actually all in one piece. The character's actually kind of screwed to the bottom of the base. So you don't have to worry about anything kind of falling off or detaching. But, uh... All the other figures we've reviewed have had certain things that were detachable about them. So it's nice that this one's kind of all in one. And this one also actually has a alternate version. This is the first one that we're going to review that has an alternate version. One called the Groovy Edition. And that one has blood like splattered all over the character. I kind of wanted to get that one because it's kind of like a limited edition version from Japan. And I'm sure in the long run it will be more valuable. But uh, I think this one's perfectly serviceable. I got it at a pretty good deal. So I don't know if I'm ever going to get the other one or not, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll review it next year. First thing I want to talk about is actually the base. Because the base to me is probably the best part of this. Because this is what I was talking about. is kind of referencing the, uh, the second film. There was a moment in there in which they were fighting a kind of spirit or apparition. One of these deadites that had reanimated and was like living in the basement or cellar no it wasn't living in the basement or cellar. they put it in the basement <laughs> because they couldn't figure out how to kill it or how to detain it so they locked it in the basement and that's kind of what this is referring to this is the moment in the film where the other people that ash was trying to convince finally kind of started to believe his story you know to be true because now they're seeing it firsthand and of course they had to rely on ash to help them because he's the experienced one in this scenario and they are novice so he helped them by putting the spirit into the basement or the whatever have you and trapping it under there and that's what you're getting from this base you're gonna see the change you're gonna see a little hand coming up and you get to see the Necronomicon and the wood planks from the actual cabin so that's probably I think the coolest part of this figure well definitely one of them there's this is actually probably one of the best designed ones like look at all the intricacies and the clothes and the rips and the tatters I mean then you have the kind of holster for the shotgun and there's a moment in this film where Ash has to actually cut his hand off because it gets possessed by one of the deadites. This is what I'm saying and it can kind of operate independently where your even your limbs could be kind of possessed. So he had to cut his hand off to protect himself and he ends up replacing it with a chainsaw. So now he has like a chainsaw hand and this is something that's definitely something that's very iconic with the series. So this is definitely the best move they could have gone with because there's just so many iconic moments here. And the clothes are all tattered and ripped because of all the battle damage and the chaos as you see he gets more, I don't want to say defeated, but more damaged over the course of the movie. And that's ter that's definitely replicated here. It's got the shotgun holster on the back and the booty shorts, which is something that is a staple for each of these figures, almost all of them end up wearing some sort of booty shorts at some point in time but i will say that booty looking kind of weak man that's a weak that's a weak booty man this is definitely a more muscular looking figure than some of the other ones we've reviewed she's got kind of a flat booty there uh but that's all right everything else about her is gorgeous she got a little bit of the bra kind of popping through there at the top and of course a little bit of the blood on the chainsaw a cut on the mouth on the lip oh my goodness bunch of gla gashes and slashes all over the figure's body like this is a this is an excellent figure all right easily probably one of my favorite from the entire set uh, it's 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 really no real complaints about it the chains actually move on the actual floorboard like so cool man so cool thank you guys for watching I hope you have enjoyed celebrating Halloween with me here on this channel there's gonna be a few more figure reviews maybe one or two at the time of you seeing this video and Halloween should probably be a few hours away by the time you're viewing this. So be excited for the additional content that's coming. Please show your support by liking, commenting, and subscribing to Techno Tokyo Theater. Please share this video as I put in a lot of hard work into this videos for you guys. I've even cut off my, probably enjoy my beard in order to make more 
quality content for you guys to look more like the characters I'm trying to emulate. Though I'm only going to be <laughs> as close as I can be. Once I paint my face white, I'm going to look like the State Puff Marshmallow Man. But we're going to do the best we can <laughs> to try to replicate some of these horror icons in order to make some fun skits for you guys. So I hope you've been enjoying this video as well as the other videos that come to the channel. Please show your support and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.